Okay, are we ready? All right, everyone, welcome to our Friday morning session. We are so pleased um, to have Miss Sandy Dubay Smanago with us today. Um, I'm going to introduce Sandy in a minute, but I did want to mention our sponsors um, again. I just uh, Obviously, I know so many people have been having a great time this week. I've heard so many incredible stories, and it's really because of our sponsors that we are um, able to make this happen. So please give them some love and um, a shout out and a little thumbs up here because they have just been incredible. All right, guys. Oh, my goodness. Well, so I want to talk to you a little bit about Sandy. Sandy, how long have we known each other? It's yeah, been... I I don't know. Um, I'm thinking like six months, a year, maybe. Yeah, she's no fun. Yeah. <laughs> no, not fun at all. <laughs> and I don't think you're going to enjoy today. No, I'm just teasing. Um, so Sandy is the owner, CEO and founder of Platinum PR. It's a PR and marketing firm, which um, has invigorated the identities of small businesses, associations, and educational institutions across the United States. Sandy has such a huge platform of clients, and I've always been in awe of what she does um, for her businesses and for her communities. She's very passionate about helping individuals and businesses get clarity, roadmap, and courage to step out and be seen. Um, Sandy's very involved in the community. She's an active member of industry organizations such as the Maryland Economic Development Association. Many people know this as MEDA. The International Economic Development Council. She's also an active member and past president of the Sh Shepherdstown Rotary. We've been trying to get her to transfer to Frederick, but I don't know, she just loves her Rotary over there. <laughs> I know, it's so hard. And she serves on the board of directors of the Scarborough Society for Shepherd University, Shepherd University Alumni Association, and the Blue Ridge Community and Technical College Foundation. And of course, we serve together on Downtown Frederick Partnership. I am thrilled for you guys to hear all the knowledge she has to drop today. And I'm sure you will be just as excited as I was to have her um, be a part of this. So Sandy, we're gonna turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Jen and Caitlin. You guys have been amazing all week. I have not been live on most of the sessions, but I have tuned in and watched the recording. So if you haven't or you missed a recording this week, I encourage you to go onto Facebook and you know dive in and catch it. Some amazing, amazing stories and you know points of inspiration. <laughs> when I went into this week to kind of plan out my talk and figure out what we were going to do and how we were going to frame it, what I wanted to do, my intent was to use the stories of these amazing speakers and, you know, integrate them into my talk. Um, while I must say, I have truly been profoundly impacted and changed because of the stories. Um, I've decided to change things up a little bit again. Um, and we're going to walk through a roadmap that's really going to be all about you. Uh, you are my focus today. And I want you to walk out of here with the PR roadmap that you want. You might be sitting here right now wondering, I don't even know what a PR roadmap is. I'm just here because this is she week and I need to finish it on a good note. And that's totally fine. We're going to get into that. But I know that for myself, I am a different woman today than I was last Friday. The stories that these women have shared throughout the week have been amazing. The courage and vulnerability that has been expressed. I know, I know it sounds somewhat cliche, but I am a different person because of She Week 2020. Um, I know that I am more engaged this year than I ever could have been had it been in person because, you know, life, um, trying to run a business, trying to do all the things. I would have picked one or two events and thought that I was a rock star. Um, this way, I was able to engage in like six or seven events, and now I know you are rock stars. So whether you came here today, and I think this is gonna be my first chat question. What I wanna know is if you came here today thinking that you want to create a PR roadmap for yourself, 
or for your organization. Um, I'm I want to get a handle on kind of your goals and expectations for our time together. So if you want to jump into the chat and just, yep, start it there. Okay. So we've got for yourself right off the bat, organization, both, love it, self, organization, cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, Lisa, when you said uh, for me with a smiley face, honestly, that made me think, oh my gosh, maybe she feels almost guilty for admitting it. That's how I interpreted the text, um, which I think sometimes we tend, we tend to go to, we tend to go to that place. Um, but yeah, so a lot of both, um, a, lot of, a lot of individuals, so a really good mix. So what I'm going to encourage you today to do is to sit here with an open mind. Um, I'm going to mention ideas and suggestions, and you might think, there is no way this is applicable to me. This is, there is no way this is applicable to my organization. But I want you to pause. I want you to pause and think, wow, okay, no, she came up with an idea, and we just brainstormed something. Um, that exact thing doesn't work for me or my organization. But if I tweak it, if I change it up just a little bit, it could be perfect. Also want you to think about, for those of you that are working um, for your organization or thinking about this for your organization or both, uh, I want you to be thinking in terms of human to human. Um, when we go to promote organizations, we're really promoting the people behind the organization. The organization isn't, you know, the one that's going to be on the front page of a magazine, on the front cover of a magazine. It's going to be a face, a human within that organization. So come to this morning kind of through that lens. We, um, I'm not going to show slides today. I'm just going to talk. And I almost, uh, and this is where Jen and Caitlin start to freak out. I almost threw the whole thing away and said, nope, we're going to do one hour of like rapid fire coaching because that, <laughs> that is what would energize me more than anything else. Oh yeah, Jen's like, oh, please don't, please don't, please don't, please don't, please don't. This is our last day. Please don't. Um, so no, I'm not. Um, I do have some structure, <laughs> some organization here, but what it's 8.30 in the morning, I mean, come on. Um, and it's on Friday. So I want you to get your pad of paper ready. I don't know about you, but you know, I've been writing over this whole She Week notebook all week and you know, pull out your page for today and we are going to start to kind of literally fill in the blanks. I don't want you to write down what I say necessarily as what it means to you. I want you to think about this in a way of um, interpreting and really creating that PR roadmap for you or for your organization or for both. First, why? Why are we doing this? Why are we even creating a PR roadmap? This PR roadmap is going to help us to get from where we are today to our goals. Um, it, but, and why to do it is it helps to bring clarity. It is going to help you to define your message and your audience. So important. Your audience might be the women on the screen. Your audience might be very different. So wanna be thinking about that. A PR roadmap, you need to set a goal. You need to figure out what that goal is. And we're gonna talk a lot about that um, today because you might not have an idea of what that goal is, but you might also have some things popping into your head. Um, who was it? I think it was Crystal earlier in the week, um, had a goal of seven or her word of the year was seven. Um, and she, cause she had a $7 million goal. Um, oh my God, I loved everything about it. Who else? Like seriously, it, it, who didn't love that goal? Like, I, I, like it blew me away. I absolutely loved it. Perfect business goal, perfect goal for her passion. Um, not a PR goal. We need to like rein it in a little bit to be a PR goal, but I still loved it. Um, so your roadmap is going to give you that focus and clarity, um, and it's going to give you some measurable milestones to get to that end goal. 
I'm also going to propose that the reason and how to effectively implement your PR roadmap is with some accountability. I don't know. Nobody really likes that, do we? You know, I've got a coach who like actually holds me accountable to the stuff I said I was going to do from week to week. Oy. Um, but if I didn't, I wouldn't get it done. It just wouldn't happen. Other priorities would take precedence and things would, yeah, things would fall through the cracks and I wouldn't stay focused. Um, that roadmap would not, I wouldn't end up meeting my, you know, reaching the goal. I wouldn't end up getting to the finish line. So thinking through that. Now let's get into your message. So now we're in the message portion of our uh, worksheet, if you're following along on the worksheet. I want you to think about your story. What is the story that you have to tell? Now your story, it might not feel like it measures up to these amazing intense stories that we've heard this week. I'm sorry, who else cried with, when Sue Huff gave her talk? Sue Huff is a, one of my best friends. Um, we share an office. <laughs> um, if you notice the, the backgrounds is the same. Um, but I wasn't here. I watched the recording and it was amazing. Uh, I've been crying all week. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So you might not think that you can compete with that. Wipe those thoughts from your mind. This isn't about competition. This is about you. Only you can tell your story. Your story is unique. It's special. And someone else needs to hear it. Now that story, I used to think, um, oh, when people would talk about story, that story needs to be personal. It needs to, I need to be vulnerable. I need to do all the things. Maybe that's not where you start. Maybe you start with the stories of your organization, um, the passion that you have for your nonprofit or for your business. I fall on the crutch of talking about um, Platinum PR and the work that we do in economic development to help communities across the region. Um, because that's my passion. That's what I do. Um, I have also found that, and it was funny because a, a coach, okay, I work with a lot of coaches. Apparently I've needed a lot of help over the years, but um, uh, a coach, I was, I get very passionate about other generations and individuals that can't speak up for themselves, can't advocate for themselves. And I was telling a story about um, helping, I work with a lot of, Gen Z, millennials, um, okay, everybody that I've ever worked with has been younger than me, yikes. Um, that's the why I have to cover the gray. Um, but they, I believe that people need a chance. And I think sometimes people just need that opportunity to shine. And it is really important sometimes to let someone else be your advocate. Sometimes we, all, we need to advocate for ourselves. We need to speak up for ourselves. Sometimes we can't. Um, sometimes we need somebody else to do that. So I found that as, as a passion and something that I can speak to from my heart. But again, I'm not really being vulnerable about myself yet. I haven't really told you anything about myself yet. I'm using examples of other people because it's safer um, and it will cause me to, you know, hold it together today but maybe you have those personal stories. Maybe you are ready to tell your story, but maybe you're not. Either way, it's okay. You can figure out what that message is and use that to shape this PR roadmap. When you're crafting this message, I want you to write it down. Now, when you start writing, you might start writing one story and end up telling a very different story but sometimes it just has to come out. It, you just have to get it out of your head and your heart, get it down on paper. Or for those of you who are, uh, communicate um, better verbally, um, record it, record it into a voice memo on your phone. Um, sometimes recording it onto Zoom while you're staring at yourself, I would not recommend it, but if that's how you shine, then do it. Um, but stop comparing yourself. Don't edit yourself while you're writing out that story. Um, just get it out on paper. Share it with somebody. 
And that's hard. That's hard. Yeah. Might be easier to email it. It's going to be harder one on one, but start telling your story. So I'm encouraging you as part of this crafting your message, tell one person. That person could be your two year old child who is going to think that you're being silly. And so you might need to work on funny faces and great voices, but start to share it. That will get you closer to manifesting your goals. I want you to, with that sharing of one person, what are you doing? You're really asking for help. You're telling them that you can't and don't want to do this on your own. So ask for help. And you will be better and stronger and your message will be more defined because of it. I'm going to shift into your audience. And sometimes this can be the easiest or the hardest. Um, your audience, you might know. Who knows who their audience is? Who knows exactly the honed in avatar, you know, persona of exactly who they're trying to communicate with? I'd love to know. Um, it's great. Good. Oh, life cycle. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. I know exactly who you are trying to communicate with. <laughs> I know who your demographic is. Um, and um, yeah, that's great. Um, Kim says, it took me a while to be vulnerable, mm, but I share my story on Facebook Live. Perfect. Um, and an outpouring of really of messages, positive. Yes. People want to support. People want to, um, people want to be there to support you. That's great. Um, I mean, showing up vulnerable, vulnerable through service and heart ever since. Mm. It took me discovering my purpose is greater than what others think. Oh, Kim, I love that. You're right. And getting that out there that first time. I've written so many Facebook messages and then never sent them. And then hey, I have the guts. No, no, not at all. Do Caitlin, I have to are you my um, stuff up right? I'll do it for you. Can you well, help with that? I have a sermon that I need. We're working on it. Thank you. There, there we go. So, yeah. Sorry, we muted um, everybody. It's all good. So, um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard being vulnerable and putting that out there. Um, but I need you to think about who needs to hear your message, who will benefit from it, who will be inspired by it, who will be educated by it. Oh my gosh. Okay, Julie, did I just get all of your things? Did I just touch on all of Julie Gaver's tips? I don't know. There were three of them. I, I don't have her notes in front of me. I should. At all times, I should have Julie Gaver's notes in front of me. Um, some of times, the audience that needs to hear it might be very similar to you. And so that might be easy for you to think about and relate to, but other times it's going to be somebody very different. So I need you, when we get into this next section, I need you to think about that person, that individual, um, educate, inform, inspire, and entertain. I think I got in, ed, inform, educate, and inspire, and I forgot the entertain part. So um, thank you, Julie. Um, I want you to think about who that person is. I want you to think about their struggles. I want you to think about um, what their wins are like. Um, I want you to think about, um, ultimately, we're going to think about where they, where they exist, you know, online, how you can reach them, um, how you can connect with them. But um, <laughs> I'm still in the AP class. Julie, you're killing me here. Um, so uh, yes. So what's the struggle and what's the solution that you have to help? Yeah. Yeah, Kim, you're right. When you're thinking about your message and you're thinking about your audience, what is it that they're struggling with? What's their problem? And how are you here to solve it? Or just to help them. You might not, you can't solve other people's problems, but you can give them the tools. You can inspire them. You can you know, motivate them. You can push them in the right direction. I can't sit here and create all of your PR roadmap. I can't do it for you today. We don't have the time or the capacity but I can give you the tools. I can give you some ideas. I can, you know, help and inspire you to do, to act. Um, 
So thinking through that. I also want to make sure with your audience that you're thinking about it, not just women. That might really be it, but I want you to narrow it down a little bit more. Um, I know that that can be hard and you think that you might be alienating, but you're really not. You're really um, instead coming up with great clarity. Life cycle, I said me. So here, 46, almost 47 years old, almost single. Needs to lose, you know, tighten up a little bit. <laughs> not, not feeling perfect about the body image. I got some struggles. You could be my solution. Yeah, so thank you through that. We aren't all business owners. We aren't all students. We aren't all college presidents, <laughs> but we have stories to share. I want, before we move in and get away with this, I need to say it, and I've probably said it twice already. I want you to remove the doubts. I want you to be only thinking about all of the good and all of the amazing that you have to share. Okay. I give you permission to be you. I give you permission to never listen to the naysayers and get your story out there. Now we're shifting into the platforms. So we've got our message. We know who it is that we're trying to communicate with. Now we need to think of how we're gonna reach them. How are you going to connect with your audience? Now, the most important part of this is remembering or knowing, understanding that it's not about you. When you are connecting with this audience, it's about them. If your audience is on Facebook, great. Use it. Embrace it. If they're not on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn, whatever, just because that's where you felt comfortable, I need you to shift. For this, just for the purposes of sharing your message. I'm not telling you, if your audience isn't on Instagram, then you can never get on Instagram. Oh my God, we all have our vices, don't we? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm addicted to Instagram stories. Um, but I want you to think about your audience. I want you to think about the best way to reach them. If they read SAS Magazine, Frederick Lifestyle, Frederick News Post, or the Washington Post, I want you to be thinking about them. If they are radio or Snapchat, Oh my gosh. I, how many of us got on Snapchat because of our child? Huh? Okay. Yes. 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 And now are addicted. Okay. Yeah. So I uh, um, haven't done the TikTok thing though. So I draw the line. I draw the line there. But I want you to be thinking about that. I need you to think about the audience. Um, the audience might look just like you. You might be considered in your target audience, but you might not be. So don't fall into the, the easy way of, um, of doing PR and just staying in your comfort zone and communicating across the platforms that you consume, where you consume information. When we talk about public relations, we talk about reaching out and connecting with others, connecting with that audience. There are a couple, I've kind of got to break them down into a couple of different um, pockets. So we've got the media relations, which is in that kind of traditional side of public relations, it's kind of earned media, where you are not paying for it. Um, a, you are, um, you are, you know, it might be a traditional newspaper, magazine, TV show, radio show, things like that, kind of broadcast publications um, where you, they are looking to tell stories. Um, they are looking to highlight people just like you, just like your organization. Um, so we want to kind of have that hat on 
as an opportunity in one area. Social media also falls into this and um, is perfect. Your website, your blog, maybe your podcast or others' podcasts. Some of them, as you can see, kind of tread across different lines um, and different segments that I've outlined. But those are all the different ways. There's so many others, but many of those are the big bucket, buckets of different ways to reach your audience. Um, and I want you to be thinking about the ways that feel the best and most comfortable for you, but the most effective in reaching that audience. They're all gonna have different levels of engagement that are needed and are gonna require different tools, different things to think about. So we can dive into those. Okay, let's see, I need to read a chat here. Um, when I asked my 20 year old child to help me get on Snapchat, he told me if I couldn't figure it out, I couldn't use it. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, that's brilliant. So um, <laughs> you couldn't figure out how to use the toilet at one point, but I helped you. Oh dear Lord, Julie, again, it is, <laughs> Okay, Julie's got that entertain um, button, uh, you know, of her four tips down, you know, she, I don't know why she's not doing stand-up comedy. You're freaking hysterical. Um, so I want you to think about with this um, PR roadmap. Now I've told you that, again, it's not about you because it's not, it's not about how you want to um, consume information, but you do, there is a reality in all of this, and there does need to be a point where um, you need to work in the space, especially at first, that you feel most comfortable. I'm not suggesting that you jump out on a stage if you know you are going to break out in hives if you're standing and talking in front of more than 10 people. Um, but so if writing works for you, um, if the written word is how you thrive and can tell and share, then that's what I want you to think about first. If communicating um, in this way, one-on-one, -on -one, or speaking to an audience is the way you thrive, then I want you to think about how you can use your verbal communication skills um, to align with your PR roadmap. Um, it, if you don't feel comfortable doing it, what's gonna happen? It's not gonna happen. You're just not going to do it. So let's make it easy for some wins because you, I want you to be successful. I want you to find the places and the platforms that are fun for you. And that's when you'll see the best results. So the roadmap itself, I want you to first set your goal. And I'd love to know, um, you must, okay, I'm reading a quick thing. You must be comfortable to remain authentic. Oh, yes, 100%, Teresa, I love that. You must be comfortable to remain authentic. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I just need to take a pause and just let it soak in. It's good. So I want you to think about this plan. And I'm curious if anyone has a PR related goal that they would like to share. If you do not, that is fine. I'm going to be sharing some examples. But the first thing to do with this in terms of a step to take to create this plan is to set that goal. You need to know where it is that you're going. Um, and now we're going to ha hash out that plan and we're going to get there in a second. You need to start working the plan because it's not going to work itself. This <laughs> stuff is not easy. If it was, everybody would be doing it. And I want somebody, I want you to ask somebody to hold you accountable. That could be a family member, could be a friend, could be a colleague, could be um, a board member, could be a volunteer, could be some stranger you find on the street. I do not care. <laughs> but I want, I want somebody to hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. Mastermind groups are great. Yep. Yep. Um, so let's see here. Um, just scrolling up. Need to leave room for growth. Ah, 
growth is what happens when you, you know, when you're uncomfortable. Oh, yes, I think I love it. Um, and if you're comf- if you're not comfortable, the focus is totally on you and your discomfort. Oh my gosh, Bonnie, you're right. You're right. Because what? It's not about me. It's about you. It's about you know. It's about the your audience. I do love mastermind groups. Great, great, great accountability. Okay, Michelle, goal. Increase alumni giving and participation for our community college. Okay, okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna workshop that on and think about how to um, tie in some PR steps to get you there. Okay, I love it. So, um, and uh, look, Leslie said, the only way to soar is to jump. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, goal from Tanya, increase the number of mentees um, who know who we are and what we do. Perfect. Oh, okay, Michelle, thank you. Not Frederick Community College. You live in the Northern neck of Virginia. Okay, cool, thank you, that's fine. <laughs> Um, full disclosure, I appreciate and respect that. I love that we uh, have so much engagement from the region. Super cool. So some examples, some examples. We've got some great examples um, here. I'm gonna, I have to write them down because otherwise I'll forget already. Um, let's see, mentees and uh, alumni giving. Okay, so other goals, again, trying to figure out, you know, who the audience could be, would be, might be here today. Um, maybe your goal, but you don't want to put in the public chat, um, is to get a new job. That could be something. And you create a PR plan to align you there. A goal might be to get published. Might be to get published locally. Might be to get published in an industry publication, industry magazine. Your goal might be to speak at She Week 2021. And I'm all in. I love it. I'm so curious if that's a goal and you'll admit it and you want to pop it into the chat and get them thinking. So, you know, let's let's start pitching Jen and Caitlin now. Let's fill up their line of speakers today. It'd be awesome. So um, let's see, another goal, increase awareness and support for racial um, racially equitable curriculum at Frederick County Public Schools. I love it. So, yeah. Now, when you hear these goals, I gotta write that one down because again, I'll forget. Um, increase awareness. Uh, yeah, we're gonna workshop, and I want you to think about how these can, it's all about educating. It's about connecting with the people. So Zoe, if we execute on your PR plan correctly, people will be coming to you, begging you to figure out how to have more racially appropriate curriculum in the school system. Because you're going to be constantly communicating and reaching the right group. And you're going to have all of these advocates and allies on your side. They're going to get it. They're going to know. They are going to be helping you make your goal a reality. So what I wanted to do next um, was this, um, to kind of workshop some of these um, goals and things that you have, but I wanted to give a couple of ideas, a couple of suggestions. So I have three or four different goals that um, I made up that you might be able to relate to. So let's say your first goal is to get a new job. Find that dream job, find that next job, find your calling. That's the goal. What are some of the, my, the milestones that you need to do to get there? The first thing that you need to do, we're gonna update LinkedIn. We're gonna update social media. We're going to clear up your presence there. Um, and at the end of this, 
Jen and Caitlin remind me, we're going to share LinkedIn profiles. So um, I want everybody at some point um, to be pulling up their LinkedIn profiles. And I want a big old, you know, dump of um, everybody's LinkedIn profiles, because that gets to tip number two in this process is you're going to network. I want you to network and connect with other people. And these other people, honestly, you might be helping them more than they're helping you. Um, anytime somebody reaches out to me that is looking for a job or is a student that is interested in marketing or PR or economic development, um, I honestly, I enjoy the conversation 10 times more than they do because I like hearing their story. I like hearing how they got to, got to this point. Um, I like being in that space to support and give them the encouragement that they need. And it fuels me, it fuels me. So if you're looking for something and you're thinking about reaching out, don't hesitate, reach out to somebody else. They may not have the capacity. Um, they might have other things going on. They might be totally overwhelmed in their space. Um, but if you can connect, it's so mutually beneficial and beautiful. So I want you to network and we're going to do that here too. I want you to reach out to potential mentors. Uh, if you're looking for a job, you've got ideas, you've got um, you know, thoughts of um, who you might want to connect with. Kristen Koenig just popped up. And Kristen is a, obviously an amazing graphic designer as she has done, uh, I think she created the workbook, right? Did you create the She Week workbook? Um, and uh, is a professor at Shepherd University, my alma mater. And Kristen is in that fortunate place um, as are those of you who are in the public school system or in higher education that get to work with students, get to work with young talent every single day. Don't take it for granted. You guys are, and you're so um, beautifully positioned to help those students to network with others. Help them connect and expand their reach. So I encourage you to do that. Um, and then, and I know you do encourage it every year. That's great. Bringing in speakers, bringing in speakers in Zoom. My next tip in this area is to use COVID to your advantage. Set up those virtual, you know, a virtual cup of coffee or tea. I'm a big tea drinker. Um, it decreases the, your cash outlay because you're not, you know, buying an expensive cup of coffee um, or tea uh, or kombucha. Mm. Um, and it saves time. You, there isn't a travel time. So set it up. I actually hate regular phone calls these days. I know we all have Zoom fatigue and everything, or it is a thing, some people do, but I love, um, I love Zoom, I love seeing your faces. I keep scrolling through all of the faces because I just wanna see you smiling. Angela, I can tell you have been smiling this entire session and you bring me joy and you help me continue. So I thank you, but I digress. So set up those virtual chats, you know, connect and engage with people. Um, like I said, use COVID to your advantage. Tom says um, it's perfect for him right now um, because he's transitioning to work and raising the family within the next year. Oh, you're welcome. Yay, thank you, I'm, uh, I'm glad. And yes, Kim, I love me some kombucha. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's an addiction. It's truly an addiction. Anyway, let's say another goal, another PR goal. This might be more of what you were thinking coming in here today, um, but a PR goal is to get published. Right? So who's got a PR goal of getting published? Who wants to get published in anything, everything? Um, I want you to think about your story angle. I want you to think about that message. Um, what is it that you have to share? When doing that, you need to then research those publications. Washingtonian is not going to publish the same type of thing as a Frederick magazine um, or Frederick Lifestyle or SAS. They're all uniquely different. Before pitching, before making that call or sending that email and saying, I've got this great story idea. Um, I think this would fit well with your magazine. Make sure it would actually fit well with their magazine. 
and this goes for magazine or blog or you know broadcast news make sure it's appropriate show that you've taken the time to research that you are respecting their time and um you know understand their audience a couple of years ago i um had this kind of aha moment i had a client that just wanted to get on the front cover and okay you know getting on the front cover i'm sorry we can't all be jessica underwood and be on the front cover of sas magazine every month you know it's just not possible because i mean seriously how kick-ass was that picture it was amazing right yeah okay uh it's sitting on my coffee table i just look at it just look at it but that's one that's one opportunity there are so many other opportunities within the magazine and i want you to think about how you could collaborate with others so that when you pitch this idea to i'm using magazine as an example but it could be any of it that it could be more than just it's more than just you how about um you know fcc and this in Virginia, um, Northern Neck of Virginia Community College, um, and let's go a little sh shepherd shout out. How about all three of you come together and pitch a story about alumni engagement during COVID and all of the things that you're doing? So you're sharing a story about all of you. You're sharing a story about, um, uh, you know, with lots and lots of tips. What happens there? is that it's then you're not the only one that shares that article out. All three schools end up sharing that article out. So more people are seeing it. So it's one thing to be the sole feature, but I think it's so much more powerful to be one of many. Something to think about. Okay, uh, let's see, Kim, uh, let's see, said that she, um, showed up she week um last week is something just curious oh since it's been an amazing connection have been published in sas Frederick magazine and i'm speaking for she week this afternoon awesome um cool love it love it love it love it okay okay so kim that meshes beautifully with what i had as goal number three and this again is another little shout out to Ms. Gerlach and Ms. Walsh, and that is goal number three, be a She Week 2021 speaker. I'm sorry, you all saw that coming, didn't you? Y'all did, yeah, okay. So what do you do, what do you want? If that's your goal, how are you gonna get there? Create a talk. So you figured out your message, you figured out your audience. If your audience are other women, primarily in Frederick County, um, but other women that could uh, learn and benefit from something that you have to share, put it together, create that talk. Step number two, we're going to practice the talk. You do not wait to show up here. Melanie Sprague, if anybody has watched or uh, has seen Jen Gerlach's interview with Melanie Sprague from this week, um, Melanie is a dear friend of mine as well, and a coach and a mentor and a colleague and a client and all the things, and just a dear friend. Um, but she always says, you don't practice in front of your audience. Like, this is not my first time talking today. <laughs> I've been working on this. I didn't want to come here and waste your time. Now, my style tends to be a little, a little squirrel-like where I get distracted, but, um, yeah, that's just a quirk and, uh, that's me. So I'm sorry, you either, yeah, you got to take it or leave it here, it's the package. But so you practice, maybe you volunteer, maybe you offer to practice and um, speak to students. You know, you call Kristen Koenig at Shepherd and say, hey, I would love to deliver a talk um, to your, to your students. Um, this is what it is. I think your graphic design students could benefit from this thing, this, my mentor program. And let's talk about it. That'd be great. That'd be great. Does anybody want to guess what the fourth thing is? 
fourth thing? Make the ask. Actually do it. Do it. Yeah, make the ask. Jen and Caitlin or the other organizations that you want to speak to that you want to get in front of. They will want to find you, but help them. Help them find you. We're not all Brene Brown yet. Okay. Make it easy for them. Make the ask. So what I'd like to do for the last 15 minutes is, well, I'd love to just unmute everybody and just have a big free for all. But again, Caitlin and Jen would have the big one on that one. So um, I would love to, you know, think through, let's see, the first one we, the first goal that came through was on alumni giving. I think that was Michelle, but I don't remember. Um, so again, the idea there, what if your goal is to increase alumni giving and engagement, um, let's profile some alumni. In that um, capacity, you almost wanna flip the switch a little bit where you become the you become the media outlet. You know, you're the one that can tell the stories. So then ultimately you have your alumni coming to you saying, oh my gosh, I just met so-and-so and, you know, they'd make a great story. You should totally do, so, you know, write an article or publish a podcast or, you know, do an interview or a little social media profile on them. Oh my gosh, because what do we love? We love to see our friends um, being successful. We love to see the stories that are shared about our friends um, and the friends that we went to college with. You're not directly making the ask, but it's always implied. I think we know it's always implied from the college or university <laughs> that you're just looking for the money, <laughs> but show us some love too. Um, so turn that around and figure out whose stories you can highlight. How can you tell the stories of your alumni or your staff or your students. Um, those, you know, mother daughter stories or father son stories or, um, you know, anything multi generational people eat up. Um, anything that is uh, where somebody went to school there and is now teaching there or, um, you know, stories engaging with, you know, if you've got pockets, if your audience is in different areas geographically. Then thinking about those, um, how you are targeting alumni. Let's say, and I don't know if you have a large alumni population in, you know, Northern Virginia or in Maryland or something like that. And that's, and so you want to identify somebody in that area that would be the person to profile and then have it, you know, get spread there locally um, in that region. Could be fun and effective. So while you all are thinking, and what before I put any of you on the spot, I'm not going to do that today. If we were in a classroom, I would totally be calling on you. Um, but I would love it if you have a thought or an idea, um, or we're just going to we'll continue moving down. But also what I want you to do is to put in your LinkedIn profiles. I just dropped mine in. Um, I'd love to see a big old a feed full of LinkedIn profiles for today. And then we can save the chat and you can go back and look at them um, and click on them and connect, um, connect with others later. So yay, thank you, Pam. And Lynn. thank you for doing that. Cool, cool, cool. Super fun. Um, okay, so what questions? Um, now that we've got this LinkedIn thing going on, um, it might be hard to get some questions. Uh, so you feel free to raise your hand and Caitlin will unmute you if you wanna ask a question. Um, the um, mentee piece um, and you know, figuring out those stories. Um, if you're trying to get more people to understand you know, what your mentor center, the opportunities that you have, um, wait, is that, the mentees is that Ashley is that I saw a video an interview with you and Jen Gerlach I don't remember this is testing my memory here oh my gosh um but um is it bad that I just stopped using LinkedIn 
<laughs> more Facebook. That's fine, Julie. Um, if anybody here doesn't already know Julie Gaver or follow her on Facebook, then I would just suggest you follow her on Facebook. That's good. Um, I'm serious, not being funny. We knew. I knew you were being serious. Um, but yeah, we'll just get you, you know, a hundred new Facebook friends. So um, the so your the mentor piece similar to the college approach but what i would do is i would pitch those stories out to oh ashley waters thank you thank you john um i would pitch those stories out to traditional news media um when you've got successes um and i'm sure you have successes every single day what to you might not feel like a success or a win because you're you've now you know um just gotten used to it is that um the um oh thank you the um the general public it's going to be new to them so share it um if you've got you know a mentor mentee relationship that has um turned into something else spectacular and amazing, um, then I want you to, I want you to share that. That's a story. That's a story that others need to hear. That's a story that your audience needs to hear. That's your message. Um, and that's what I want you to package and put together as, as an article that you could pitch to a local news media, local news outlet. Um, LinkedIn content is very different than Facebook. Yeah, I would. Oh, yes. Yeah, to Julie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now that this has turned into the uh, support Julie gave her on her return to LinkedIn um, portion of the program. Um, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, okay, we've got about eight minutes left. I would love to know what, um, what other questions, what other thoughts. Um, if you do want to raise your hand, um, Caitlin or um, Jen can unmute you. Um, but yeah, nobody has questions. You all are awesome. Okay, um, so I do have a quote that I want to read that uh, speaks to me. It's nothing new. I'm sure you've heard it. But the quote is, I've learned that from Maya Angelou, I've learned that people will never forget what you said. People will, that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. And people will never forget how you made them feel. I think that I just want to say thank you to you all for being here this week during She Week and for being so amazingly present for the speakers, for the organizers and the committee. I mean, this committee, oh my gosh. Jen and Caitlin getting lots and lots and lots of love, but this committee also doing some amazing hard work. Um, and I think that this week would not have been the same if you all hadn't been here and been so present. And it's been great. So let's see, um, Kaylee says, uh, what is my next goal? Are you asking me what my next goal is? Oh, yikes. Um, <laughs> okay, y'all did this to somebody else too. Um, um, oh, shoot, 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 what was her name? Um, Amber, they did it to Amber. Amber. <laughs> yes, I saw that. Um, my next goal is to launch a podcast. That's my next goal is to launch a podcast. We, um, I moved the office into a big, beautiful space and we've got a, a room um, for a podcast studio that I'm building out. And I want to help economic development, help economic developers tell their stories. Um, and I want to interview economic developers you know, across the country um, to share their stories of best practices and how they support businesses and organizations. and their community. So that's what I want to do. And no, Kristen, I moved from Shepherdstown. I live in Frederick now. Um, that's a personal story. And notice I didn't share anything personal. 
this may be the first time I've ever given a presentation, given a talk, and I did not tell people that I have a 19 year old daughter that goes to WVU. Um, first time ever. Oh, wait. <laughs> I did just sneak that in, didn't I? You did. <laughs> we have a question. We have one yes. other question. Yeah. Um, a few people would like to know how they go about finding a mastermind group. What do you think? Oh. Oh. Yeah. I am not a I'm going to defer to Julie if Julie could put something um, could offer up. That is a really good question. I have been a member of Vistage. Um, there is a local Vistage group, which is mastermind, but not free. Um, and, um, but amazing. So yeah, Mary Ellen says start one. <laughs> um, yes. And maybe that's, maybe that's it. Maybe that's what we do. Another alternative uh, to mastermind groups is mentoring circles. Oh, women to women mentoring. Oh, that's a good one, Ashley. Thank you. Yeah. I um, um, could always um, get enough people who are interested in the Facebook group and start our own. Mm -hmm. So why don't we um, get someone to start a conversation in the She Week Facebook yeah. group and then let's see where we can take it from there. I love it. I love it. So cool. Okay. Um, yes, let's start with, I think we did. I think we've got, <laughs> I think we might have a hundred new members in the Facebook group, but yes, there's 71, <laughs> but yes, our new mastermind group. Um, but yeah, yes, super cool. Does. Super cool. Sandy, okay, well, with that. Thank you so much. Yeah. See, you see why we love uh, love Sandy because she's so full of energy and she gave us some great ideas and um, I tried to take some notes Sandy while you were talking um, about the different roadmaps and I put them up in the chat so if anyone would like to uh, like she suggested download the chat thank you for suggesting people um, put their LinkedIn profiles in there because I think that was lovely and a really terrific idea this week has been so full of support so I would encourage everyone to download the chat. It's the three dots on the right hand side there and um, you can download the entire thing. And um, <laughs> Julie, Julie says you deserve some French, some fresh French fries and a milkshake, I think, and a kombucha and lots of other things. So I know. Yes, yes. <laughs> Literally yes. going to go Julie, number one. Julie and I did Leadership Maryland together and, and Helen, we're, Helen's here, to Helen Profiter is here too. And we would, we would carpool together and we would um, stop at McDonald's after almost every single week that we were together uh, or a couple of days that we were together to get um, hot, hot french fries from McDonald's and a milkshake. I love it. Well, if so that's good. the secret to success, I know where I'm going for lunch. That's fine. <laughs> Thank you so I much. Thank you. My pleasure. Everyone Thank you. Thank for you. coming and Sandy, we so appreciate your time. Oh, Have my pleasure. Time. You guys were awesome. Thank you all. Thank you.